Cleveland investors, Cleveland real estate aficionados, people trying to get their money in the land. What do I got going on today? I got a good show today, folks. We're going to be looking at a Cleveland duplex that is ready to rock the Burr strategy. Buy, renovate, rent, refinance, repeat your way to wealth. Let's do it. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. This is the show where I help people like you, everyday folks from all over the world, invest in Cleveland real estate. Now, you don't have to actually be interested in Cleveland itself uh, to get value out of this show, right? We teach you the realities of the real estate business. So if you're doing a lot of stuff in your own market, that's great, man. Continue to watch the show, stick around. I feel like we provide you guys value as well. But if you want to take it one step further and actually invest in the Cleveland market, not only do we give you the great content here on the show, but we work with you one-on-one -on -one and then we handle the boots on the ground, okay? And today we're working with my man JJ, an investor from California, working with you one-on-one, -on -one, brother. I think you are going to like this one, right? This is a bird deal, right? You're trying to get some money from some other investors, trying to, trying to work on some stuff, right? We're looking at a lot of stuff, wholesale deals, flips, possibly burrs. I think this one is going to be good for you. I think uh, this is a deal that makes sense, very practical deal. These are uh, some of the types of deals that we could uh, produce for you guys on a regular basis out here in the Cleveland market, brother. So without further ado... Let's jump into the details right after this. Hi, I'm here for an interview. Holdwise TV. Yep, take a seat with the other applicants. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome back, folks. This is the part of the show where we really get into the nitty gritty, right? We really get into the numbers let me get a little little sipsy of the water i'm a little little parched this morning now this deal gonna make y'all thirsty too if you know what i'm saying 504 12th street illyria 44035 78 and a half better than the market 81 days okay now here's the thing okay here is the thing illyria i love illyria I freaking love Illyria because it's off everybody's radar, dude. I started the show like Cleveland investors, right? We're talking about Cleveland, 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 Cleveland. You don't ever hear me say, yo, what's up? Let's get into some Illyria. Ain't nobody know what Illyria is, dude. When you invest in a metro area, right, we hear the biggest city, right? But nobody knows like what the suburbs and all that jazz is right so from a national perspective there is like a bajillion eyeballs focused on the cleveland market because the cash flow in cleveland is amazing okay but nobody's paying attention to the other city names okay and Elyria, it's a little further, right? It's not in the inner ring, okay, like Cleveland. And, you know, you look at a map, you see Cleveland, and then boom, right there you got Lakewood. Boom, you got Parma, Garfield Heights, these inner inner ring suburbs. They're right there. They're in the same county. Elyria is in a different county, Lorain County. It's not that far, though. It's like literally a half hour away, okay? It's like the same distance uh, from Cleveland to Elyria is the same distance from Cleveland to Akron, which is where LeBron's from. But nobody really pays attention to that, right? Everybody thinks LeBron's from Cleveland. He's not. The dude's from Akron, okay? Same distance, right? Uh, and uh, Akron, Cleveland, and Elyria, they're all in different counties, right? Cleveland is Cuyahoga County. Elyria is Lorraine County. Akron is Summit County. But Holton Wise, we manage in all those counties, okay? So I think investors can, like, really get a lot of really good deals in Elyria. I am focusing a lot on Elyria these days uh, because I believe the quality 
uh, of housing stock and tenant you're going to get there is very similar to what you see in some of the C-grade neighborhoods in Cleveland, but it's actually, in my opinion, a little bit nicer in Elyria, and the prices are actually cheaper, right? It usually doesn't go that way, right? You know, for every pro, there's a con, but because not a lot of folks are paying attention to Elyria, I really think that is like a, a good opportunity uh, right now for investors. Now, this one's a bird deal, right? Buy, renovate, rent, refinance, repeat, okay? It's not going to knock your socks off, right? I think a lot of investors, when they focus on bird deals, they think they're going to get all of their money back. I know when you guys, you know, watch the other videos out there online, uh, you hear the bird strategy, the goal is to get 100% of your capital back. That's not that practical, okay? You got to pay attention uh, to where we are in the world. Real estate is an ever-living, moving, breathing thing, okay? It's like, woo, 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 up, it goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. It's been doing that for fucking ever, okay? That's what you're getting involved. Like, real estate investors, guys, it's, it's more of like a lifestyle than just like a, a one, one-off investment. So you have to understand, real estate, sometimes it's a buyer's market, sometimes it's a seller's market. 2021, seller's market everywhere in the country okay if if you do any any amount of research a monicum of research you would know that we are in a seller's market in 2021 so right now is there enough inventory to get all your money back and do a bird deal probably not what i have for you is basically a best case scenario of what works in 2021 now like 2013 2014 different time different story right I made a lot of money when we were in like a huge recession, right? Okay, but you got you can't go back in time. Okay, you got to look how you can make the best money in the market today, right? Like, could I buy properties uh, for prices today in 2021? Do I buy properties for the same prices today in 2021 that I did back in 2013, 2014, 2015? No, no, I can't. Okay, does that mean I stop? Working in real estate in 2021, I stopped doing deals. I stopped making money. No, it doesn't. You just got to adapt your strategies to what works in the current space of the market, right? So with this one, we're looking to Elyria because it's off the radar. And look, it's just a very minor little burr, right? This unit, it's, it's, it's unoccupied and it's just dated, right? Nothing major. It's just dated. It's ragged. And then here's the other unit, okay? The other unit's already occupied. So we don't really have to do all that much. Just a nice, simple duplex, right? They got it listed at 78 and a half. I said we come in strong, I, I believe, right? It's been in the market a little little while, so we'll try to get a little discount. But I think a lot of people also think that, like, if a property's on the market, like, the seller's just ready to take every any offer. Like, I don't believe that's the case. I think they know the value here. And they're probably just, like, ignoring low, low ball offers so we're going to come in with a strong offer right 75 and then we're just going to plan to put in 15k into that vacant unit right so we'll be all in at 90 and then then we will have uh two units which have a market rent of 1500 a month right 750 per each unit 18,000 for the year now in real estate right you don't get to keep all that rent money it's not how it works right my team will handle everything for you on your behalf uh it should Budgeting for fixed and variable expense estimates costs you roughly $9,200 a year to operate this or have my team operate it for you, leaving you with almost $9,000 a year, right? This is where it gets juicy. This is where it gets good. Your total investment was ninety. At that point, we should easily be able to get this thing to appraise for 100 Gs, okay? Because uh, that's what it's worth. I would sell that property on my show, the Investment Properties for Sale show, in a minute. Two tenants paying seven fifty. I'd sell that for a hundred k all day, right? That means the bank will give you back seventy five, meaning you only got fifteen stuck into the deal. That folks projects out to a thirty three percent cash on cash return. Very simple, easy deal, and you don't have to pay a lot of money out of your pocket, right? Now, if you bought it from me on the investment properties for sale show, where somebody already did this work, you'd have to put down twenty five k, right? Doing it this way, it allows you to keep an extra ten thousand dollars liquid in your pocket, right? So that's going to increase your cash on cash return, right? So do you get all your money back? No, but you got an extra ten grand to play with and move on to the next investment. Now, a couple things though. Another reason that this property's value is kept super low, based on uh, what's going on here, right? 
Again, not a lot of people focusing on Elyria, but the other thing is they do have that other tenant. They're not collecting 750 yet. They're only collecting 500. And we don't want to immediately jack them up to 750 because that might make them move out. And then we're going to have to turn their unit as well. We don't want to do that. We don't want to put that much money into the property up front, right? You got to pay a tenant. You want to keep them in there as long as possible. And then we slowly work them up, right? Because here's the thing, folks, and this is any market, not just the Cleveland market, any market in the world. Turnovers are going to suck. Turnovers hurt your business. Turnovers affect your ROI negatively. We don't want turnovers, okay? Turnovers are bad. You're going to get turnovers, though, right? There's no scenario uh, where you can invest in real estate, especially like lower income type stuff than this, right? And not get turnovers. Not, not, not happening. Now, myself, Holton Wise, we're the biggest name in the game, okay? Nobody runs portfolios the size of ours in the Cleveland market. Like, as big as we do, right? I kind of screwed up my words there, but you know what I'm saying, right? We are the largest company of its type in the Cleveland market, okay? So I think because we're the biggest, in my personal humble opinion, I think we're the best, okay? My opinion, I think we're the best. If we weren't the best, why would we be the market leader? That's my opinion. So if I'm telling you that I'm the best at what I do, I should be telling you, oh, invest in me. You'll never get a ton of turnover, right? No. I'm not going to say that because that's not going to happen. We became the biggest, the best, because we cut it to you straight. You can't avoid that stuff, folks. It's going to happen. It's part of the business. At some point, if you work with us to manage your property, we will not be able to collect rent from your tenant, and we will have to evict those motherfuckers, and it's going to cost you some money. That's part of the game, right? So what I'm trying to get at is you're going to guaranteed have tenant turnover in this business, no matter who you work with, right? People are like, oh, I get a really good property manager. Well, we're the biggest. So, again, I believe that makes us the best because if we weren't the best, how would we get to be the biggest, right? And with us, we have not found a way to eliminate turnover. And I'm going to guess every other property manager in the entire world is going to tell you the same thing or at least show you the same thing with results. Like, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to tell you, actually. But what I'm saying is no motherfucker out there has figured out how to keep tenants in their properties forever. Because it's not possible. It doesn't happen. Right? So, with that, you're going to have your fair share of tenant turnovers in this business is what I'm trying to get at. So, what we don't want to do is try to jack up that tenant's rent and artificially create another one. You're going to have your fill of turnovers. Do not do something stupid and create another one because you're looking at the small picture. Oh, I got to get the rent to $750. do not worry about it, bro. We'll get it to $550 and then to $6. And then to s you're going to make money with them paying lower than market rent. Make the money. Try to bring money home. Don't try to just toss money into Cleveland. If this throw looked awkward, it's because I'm left-handed. You know, see that? That's like a so much more like, woo! You see, it's like the form on that one is just like so much better than the form on this one. So I just wanted to clarify that. I don't want anybody thinking I throw like a girl, all right? Now, I don't got like a 90-mile-an-hour heater, but none of this has anything to do with real estate. So let me get back to the video, okay? All I'm saying is you got to do stuff the smart way. And I see a lot of investors out there, they're looking at their spreadsheets, they're doing this or that, and they get confused, and they get in their own way, and they're like, oh, no, I got to get 750 I'm losing 250 a month. That's one way to look at it, but you're not, you're not really losing 250 a month if to get the next 250 you just have to spend another 15 Gs right up front. How many months do you have to collect 250 to cover 15 grand? And the chart that I provide you, the fixed and variable expense estimates that I provide you guys, that's a guesstimate of performance based on being somebody who's managed thousands of rentals and sold over $200 million worth of this stuff. What I don't have in that estimate is you getting in your own way and creating turnovers when turnovers don't need to occur, right? That is my estimate on what you should see if you're operating it normally, professionally, the right way. If you're out there creating vacancies for yourself those those capex numbers or not capex rather those repair numbers those vacancy and maintenance numbers those are going to skyrocket you don't want to do that right so my opinion this is a killer deal focus on fixing up the vacant unit then we burr the sucker out keep an additional 10 grand in your pocket as opposed to just buying something like this turnkey and then we keep it moving 
to the next investment. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.